Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and Her Missionaries. Coming to you from our new studio here in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Did you know that 35% of the Word of God has to do with prophecy? A lot of people are surprised with that statistic and so am I. Uh, but did you also know that uh, you can go to the most... Uh, 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 trusted seminaries, Protestant seminaries in the land, and prophecy is not taught. Pastors are coming out of seminary, and not one verse of prophecy has been talked about or taught to them. And therefore, if if the seminaries and and uh, the higher learned of Christendom is not teaching prophecy and it's 35 percent of the word of god that we are ignoring i know why this happens because as a pastor for so many years people would come into my church and they would say uh, uh, i study prophecy and the first thing i would think was uh oh here's one of those people uh, a lot of times and this is what satan has done he has, he has uh, called a lot of false Christs, a lot of false prophets and false teachers, and, and they come up with all these wild and fanciful prophecies, mostly to get your money, amen? amen. And, and so people do not trust those kinds of people, you see. So what we've decided to do is just ignore, ignore 35% of the Word of God. If we ignore 35% of the Word of God from the pulpits, from the universities and from the pulpits and, and uh, from the lecture stands in our churches, then we are going to be ignorant, right, of prophecy from the Word of God. And God said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brother. Amen? Amen. So I am not a prophet. God has not called me to be a prophet. But I have a sure word of prophecy from Genesis to Revelation, you see, that I can study and let the word divide the word where it's of no in private interpretation. And we can understand prophecy without being prophets because the Bible does the prophesy. Amen. Amen. It's, it's our duty to study it so that we are not ignorant of it. This sermon today, I want to ask you a question. When is the last time you heard your pastor say Maranatha? Never. Amen. Never. You're not to me. When is the last time that you heard your pastor pray, or one of the elders, or one of the deacons pray Maranatha in your church? Probably never, right? Amen. Maranatha means our Lord come. Our Lord come. So the Bible, Bible prophecies are Bible promises. So we're missing out on what 35% of the Word of God promises us in the way of prophecy because we're ignoring it. You see? Because there's a lot of different reasons why that we've talked about from the Word of God. But I believe that God has called us to challenge some pastors to quit trying to be so politically correct Amen. and quit worrying about offending folk and get into the Word of God and see what it says that lies in the future for Christians because what we're going to see tonight is it'll get you excited. Nothing will get people witnessing and living better and being a more faithful Christian than getting into Bible prophecy, especially when we consider the Lord's soon return. Amen? So the Bible promises that Jesus is coming back soon. Have you ever thought about this? The first promise that was made about the Lord's return in the New Testament was in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, speaking of His ascension. It says, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Of course, these are two angels. 
And then in verse 11, it says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That's a promise. That's a promise that the Lord who has went to heaven from whence he came is going to come back just like he left from the clouds. Amen. So what a promise that is from the angels, from the, from the very moment that the Lord went back to heaven, he promised to come back. Then I have to ask, why are the pulpits so silent? Why is this promise not being proclaimed and thought about? It sure was in the first century church. It sure was. This promise was made at the moment that he returned back to heaven. And what they were saying was, you ought to be looking for that and thinking about that. And your cry should be, and your heart's desire should be, Maranatha, 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 our Lord come, you see. Not only did the angels make the promise, but also the Lord Jesus promised his return. Look at it in Revelation chapter 22, <coughs> verses 12, and then again in verse 20. He said, and behold, I come quickly. See that? And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Then in verse 20, he was testified these things, saith, surely I come quickly. Speaking to John the Revelator, what did John the Revelator say back? <laughs> Good, even so, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, you see, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Now, these promises of the Lord's return, they either mean everything to us or they mean nothing. To the lost world, it's a bunch of, it means nothing because it's a bunch of hocus pocus. Uh, they'll call you crazy, won't they, Beth? Yes, uh, and think you're some kind of mystical uh, uh, hocus pocus type of person. It means nothing to them, the promise of the Lord's return. Now here's where it gets bad. To the average Christian, to the average Christian, it is something that is consigned to the infinite future, but not to be thought about today. And that is because, pastors, you have ignored, professor, you have ignored teaching these young preachers, Maranatha, our Lord, come. Amen? But listen to me. To the true believer, it is means everything it means everything about two years ago god called me into this ministry specifically and i got to studying about the promises and the signs of the times of the lord's return and i have become convinced not of any private interpretation but by those things the lord said we would see and they would be multiplied in their intensity and in their frequency. And now I have a consuming, all imposing burden on my heart to warn the church and to warn the world and to those that have seen it and to those that believe it like the first century church did. Then, then it means everything to us. Believing that the Lord could come any second will change your life. Yes. To the matter, amen? amen. Now listen, true believers yearn. That's a word we need to add to our vocabulary. Yearn. Now, we yearn in our hearts daily for the Lord's return, if you really believe it. You see, yearning for means that there is an intense feeling of longing. Now stay with me. An intense feeling of longing. For something or someone that you've been separated from. Okay? Of course we've been separated from Jesus. We're separate from everything that heaven is. For everybody that's in heaven. So we should have. Now stay with me. As Christians have a longing. A yearning. For the Lord's return. Yeah. Nothing will cause you to live a better life. Preacher, nothing will cause your people to evangelize and witness more and live more holy lives than believing Jesus could come any second. And it's the truth. It's the truth. So every moment we live with a yearning for the Lord to come back. Oh, hallelujah. 
Now listen to me. Because we live with that yearning of the Lord's return. Now listen to me. Here's one of the things I found out I've been telling y'all about. Because we live with that yearning. And we're looking up instead of looking down. Amen. We're looking toward heaven instead of looking at the world all the time. We have become candidates. Get this, Pam. We have become candidates for a special crown of righteousness at the judgment seat of Christ that those that are not looking for his return are candidates of. Let me show you that. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. The Apostle Paul said, I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. You know that you love his appearing if you're yearning. Yeah. If you're yearning for him to come back. Listen, there's seven crowns that can be won in this life. And the crown of righteousness is one of them. And I believe that everybody in this room is on track to be a candidate for it. If you're yearning, I believe, I believe all of us believe that he's getting ready to come back, but are we yearning for him to come back? You see, I don't believe that we'll ever amount to much for God until God ruins this world for us. And when we see that this world ain't nothing but a bunch of smoke and mirrors and, and we're here just like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow, then we'll start thinking about glory, especially when this old body, Michael, starts wearing out. You say, boy, it's all downhill from here. Amen. Amen. It ain't getting no better. It's only going to get worse. Amen. Amen. Now listen, one of the earliest prayers of the church was Maranatha. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. That means accursed. Mm -hmm. But then he says, Maranatha. That is an Aramaic phrase that means our Lord come. That's their prayer. First century church, that's their prayer. Our Lord come. If you don't believe, you're cursed. We're looking for the Lord to come. We are yearning for the Lord to come. The first century church had a yearning. Where is that today? When's the last time that you've heard your pastor say, Maranatha, our Lord come? When's the last time you heard him pray? And you know why he don't? Because everybody out in the congregation is not looking up, but they're looking toward the earth instead of looking for the Lord to come back. Right. That's right. They want to hear about things that have to do with the earth and living here on earth, you yeah. see. Now listen. Christianity at large is caught up in apathy regarding the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the most ignored doctrine in the Word of God. Today, instead of yearning, there's a yawning when you mention the second coming. They don't know nothing about it. They haven't been taught from the pulpit because the ones behind the pulpit haven't been taught, you see, themselves. So, listen. What is the church yearning for? That's what we have to ask. What's the church yearning for? If they're not yearning for the Lord to come back, what are we yearning for? What are we longing for? What is our intense gaze for? What are we intensely looking for? What are we hoping for? Look what the Bible says. This is going to rock your world with that in mind. Looking for that blessed hope. Titus 2 and verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing. You see, that's what we're supposed to be looking for. That's, that should be our yearning. To, to be looking for that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what our yearning should be. But you see, we haven't been taught. We haven't been reminded. So, so our yearning is for the things of the world. And not for the Lord to come back. That should be our intense longing. That should be what we're hoping for. Amen. And if we're not hoping for the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, for goodness sakes, church, what are we looking for? What are we longing for? What are we hoping for? The devil's got us off track mm -hmm. as a church. This is a special, there's a special blessing. I just sprinkled these in through here. 
There is a special blessing to those that are yearning. Look at this. For when he comes and finds us watching at his return. Amen. Y'all are going to start paying me to come here after you see this. <laughs> Luke 12, verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Amen. If you haven't heard your preacher say, Maranatha, our Lord, come, you're not watching. Or if you are, he ain't, and he's not leaving the church to do it. And look, it ain't just your church, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. If you've got a pastor that'll mention it once in a while, that's more than most ever mentioned, right? He said, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, now listen to this. He shall gird himself and make him to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. What? 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 The Lord's going to gird himself and come and serve those that are watching when he comes. I won't in on that, Tony. I want the Lord when he comes to find me watching. Amen. Amen. I want to be one of those that he girds himself and sets us down and he comes to serve us. Then look what he says in verse 38. And he shall come. He said, and if he shall come in the second watch, in other words, he didn't come the first 100, 200, 300, 400 years. Huh? But then he, then he comes in the third watch, which is late at night where we are and we know it. Mm -hmm. And find them so blessed are those servants. Amen. Amen. Listen, you all are in the minority, but usually those that are really blessed are. Amen. Because, because we are yearning. We are watching God has promised us that we will be blessed differently than those that were not watching. That's exciting. Let that sink in. I've had all week. I see y'all just letting that get in. Just let that get in. Let it get in. The second reason, or I want to talk to you about some reasons that Christians ought to yearn for the Lord's return. Okay, just real quick. Number one, Jesus will get what he deserves. When he returns, Kathy, he's going to get what he deserves. He was rejected. Tony, he was spurned. He was repudiated. He was persecuted. He was mocked. Yes. The brother Doug, for the joy set before him, he endured. Amen. He endured. Amen. Amen. His friends betrayed him. His friends denied him. His friends deserted him. He had no place to lay his head. The only thing he owned was a robe. Today he is scoffed, ridiculed, and his name is used as a curse word. Uh -oh. He does not deserve that. But for the joy set before him, Brother Michael, he endured. He endured. But one day, my friends, he is going to return as a mighty warrior, as a conquering lion. The first time he came riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, next time he comes back, it's going to be on a flying white stallion. And on his vesture will be written the words, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he will pour out the wrath of God on all those that have rejected his love and rejected his grace and rejected his mercy. He will return as judge. He will return as king of kings and lord of lords. He will be crowned with the royal eternal diadem. He will be vindicated and he will be glorified. One day, my friends, the entire world will know him. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Oh, we ought to yearn for him to come back because he's going to get what he deserves. When he shall come to be glorified by who? In his saints. And to be admired in all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. When the Lord comes back, he's going to get what he deserves for he will be admired and he will be glorified in us. Second reason we ought to yearn as Christians for the Lord's return, not only that Jesus would get what he deserves, I like this one too, 
Satan is going to get what he deserves. Amen. 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 He's going to get the defeat. He's going to get the dishonor. He's going to get the humiliation that he deserves. I hate him today. Listen, I, I don't think the Christians get mad enough at the devil. We ought to stay mad at the devil. Amen. Amen. I hate him. I am sick of him. I am tired of his schemes. I'm tired of his lies. I am tired of his deception. I am tired of his confusion. I am disgusted at his thievery. I am sickened by his abuse of children. I am sick to death of the way he has men and women treating each other. I'm tired of his murders. I'm sick of his wars. I'm, I'm just disgusted with his attacks on Israel and his attacks attacks on the church, his attacks on me, and his attacks on you. Yes. Amen. One of these days he's going to get what he deserves and that's called out in Luke chapter 18 verse 7. Y'all just have to excuse me if I get beside myself. And shall not God and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20 says, Satan will be crushed under God's feet. Revelation 20 and verse 10 says, Paul, he will be thrown into the lake of fire where he will be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. And we will gaze at him and say, that's the man, that's the one that caused all this trouble. Amen. And here comes my favorite. Isaiah 14 and verse 15 says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. That's enough reason right now to pray Maranatha, God come. Put old Slewfoot where he deserves to be. Amen. And see Jesus get what he deserves as well. The third reason, the third reason I want you to see that Christians ought to yearn for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ is the curse will be lifted from creation. Amen. The sin cursed world will be restored. Restored back to perfection. You know what that means? That means no more floods running through hazard and killing 40 people. No more tornadoes in the western part of the state or anywhere else. No more hurricanes. No more drought. No more wildfires. And listen to this one. No more cold and no more hot. It's going to be just right all the time. Amen. Amen. Perfect harmony with creation. Man will be in perfect harmony with creation. When Messiah comes, the wolf will dwell with the lamb. And the lion will eat straw like the ox, Brother Tony. The nursing child will play at the hole of the cobra. And nothing will be here to hurt because a curse should be lifted. Will be lifted. Amen. 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 That's why we ought to yearn for the Lord's return. Another reason Christians should learn, yearn for the Lord's return is the nation's. The nations will receive what they have been promised. Finally, peace and righteousness and judgment will only happen when the Prince of Peace comes. The nations, the Bible says, will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation will not lift up sword against nation. Never again will they train for war, according to Isaiah 2.4 and Micah 4.3. Just watching the news every night ought to make Christians yearn Amen. for the Lord's return. Amen. The Jews, another reason is the Jews will get what they have been promised. Many promises will be fulfilled with the remnant of the Jews in Jesus. They are still his chosen people. God has not quit on the Jews. Zechariah 12.10 says, <clears throat> And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, speaking of the Lord Jesus, and shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, according to Isaiah 60 through 62, that God's Shekinah glory cloud is going to return back to Israel. Israel will rebuild the temple. The nations will send much, assist, much assistance. The Jews will enjoy respect 
and peace and the Messiah will live in their presence. The land will be filled with joy and praise. Israel will be a beacon of righteousness and its glory will be seen by the world. Now get this one. I never had seen this. Zechariah 8.23 Thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even shall they uh, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew saying we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. Amen. What a blessing. Everybody's going to wish they was a Jew. Right now, nobody wishes they were Jewish because of the persecution. One day, everybody will wish they was a Jew. Another reason Christians should yearn for the Lord Jesus to come back is because of what's going to happen to the saints. Okay? Glorified bodies. Amen. Thank you. Glorified bodies. Perfect. Perfect. Immortal bodies bodies. That means I could eat a 10 foot long banana split if I wanted to. Amen? <laughs> Look at Philippians 3.21. Don't ever forget this. Who shall change our vile body? Hey, Amen? That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Amen? According to the work and whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He can do it. He is able. You see, and I think that's one reason that older people will listen to this message that the Lord's coming back quicker than young ones because their bodies ain't wearing out like God. <laughs> Amen. According to Revelation 19, he will rule and reign. We will rule and reign in these glorified bodies with Jesus for a thousand years here on this earth. Now here comes something that I've never seen before. It might not mean nothing to you all, but it makes me look forward to the millennium. Watch this. Jesus will reign from Mount Zion in Jerusalem as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Lord of Lords, according to Isaiah 24, verses 21 through 23. But get this. King David, King David, in his glorified body, will reign as King of Israel during this time. I didn't know that. Watch this. Watch this. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. Wow. Amen. Amen. We're going to see him. Oh, We're going to see David on the throne in Jerusalem. Now stay with me. Look what he says. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. Thank God for letting us see what that yeah. means. Yeah. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. Why does that mean so much to me? Because David messed up. David messed up big time. Yeah. He was a man after God's own heart. Huh? Yeah. God, God is going to put him on the throne just like he said that he was. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That ought to give us all hope. Because there ain't nobody sitting here tonight or anybody that's going to listen to me that has done everything perfect. And you can't sit here and say that you, you've amounted to everything that you know the Lord has wanted you to amount to with no mistakes. We've all got regrets. We've all made mistakes and some of us monumental mistakes. But praise be to God, He loves us anyhow, right? He saved us knowing what we was going to do. He made David king knowing that he was going to commit adultery, yes. knowing that he was going to murder Uzziah. Yes. Amen? Yes. He saved it anyway. Yes. Quit letting the devil beat you down and tell you that you ain't nothing and that you ain't a nobody. Because I'm here to tell you, my friends, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are God's children and we are somebody going somewhere. Amen? Amen. I look forward to seeing old red-headed David sitting on the throne. Amen. <laughs> Saints in their glorified body will be scattered all around the world to assist the Lord's reign. 2 Timothy 2.12 says, We suffer with him, we'll also reign with him. Mm -hmm. Revelation 2.26, And he that overcometh, now listen, and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We're going to have power over the nations. <laughs> I barely got power. I ain't got power over 221 Hillbrook Drive. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but 
But God's going to make us mayors. God's going to make us governors, presidents, and kings. But mostly teachers. Because the Bible says during the millennial that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth like the water covers the sea. Who's teaching them? Us. Us. With these truths in mind, shouldn't every Christian be yearning for the Lord's return? I've noticed four things that causes apathy to prevail amongst Christians today. Number one, unbelief. Number two, ignorance. Number three, fear. Number four, carnality. You see, unbelief. The mocking of this doctrine is coming from the church. That's a sure sign the Lord's getting ready to come back. He said when they start mocking, saying everything's always been like it was, that's when I'm coming. The church is doing that. Not the world. The world could care less. Listen, you start preaching that the Lord's ready to come back right now and the signs of the times point that, they're going to say you're a nutcase. Mm -hmm. You done fell off the turnip truck. Amen? Unbelief. That's why you're not hearing pastors Say, Maranatha, O Lord, come. Secondly, ignorance. To ignore means that you will be ignorant of the doctrine. That's why we don't hear Maranatha, our Lord, come from the pulpits. Fear. Now, usually that comes from those that are in a works for salvation type um, uh, denomination because tomorrow I'm going to reach that sinless perfection. I didn't get it again today, so they never want the Lord to come back. <laughs> Amen. And then carnality in love with the world this is the biggest thing mm -hmm. therefore they don't simply just do not want the Lord to come back mm -hmm. and I'm going to finish with this thought for me there's another reason that I want the Lord to return mm -hmm. that I yearn for the Lord to return yes. and that's because I want to see my mom. I want to see my mom again. I believe she's there. Amen. I want to see my daddy. I remember my mom in the hospital just before she died. She seen me coming down the hallway. And she started squealing. She was so happy to see me. Ain't nobody else ever squealed because they happy to see me. They might have squealed and run off. Amen. Yeah, I want to see David. I want to see Jesus. Amen. I want to see my mama, my grandma, my grandpa. I want to see all my loved ones that went on before me. And I thank God today. That the Lord made a way by shedding his blood that a old wicked sinner like me could have this hope. Not that I've earned it, not that I deserve it, but out of his great love has he saved me. Out of his great love has he shed this blood that I can be with my mama one day. I can be with him one day. Yes. Through that blood, he's made me fit for heaven, you see. Not through works that I had done. He didn't, listen, I didn't save myself. I can't keep myself. My salvation is a work that God started, and he's going to see it all the way through. Amen. He don't start something and then stop on it, right? Amen. So because of that precious blood, I know I'm on the winning side. And I don't have to be afraid of hell. Because the Lord has delivered me out from that punishment and that condemnation because there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in the Lord Jesus. You guys hear me? The next time the devil tries to tell you you ain't fit to speak the name of the Lord in yourself you ain't. Just plead the blood and take that cross because of that blood. Because of that blood I have the authority in and through him Amen. to rebuke the devil. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank God that the story didn't end there. Everybody wears their necklaces with the cross. You know, in the first century, they wouldn't have dreamed to wear a necklace of the cross. It was such a gruesome, terrible place. I believe we need to come up with some necklaces with an empty tomb on it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because we are victorious in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Father, our God. 
Lord, we do this and you know our hearts because we want to encourage one another. But our overall goal is that some lost sinner, some lost boy or girl, some lost mom or dad, brother or sister, grandma or grandpa, might hear these words and see, Lord, Jesus high and lifted up. And be convicted of sin, repent of that sin, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be born from above. Oh God, please use this, this simple message from a very simple man. And God, we ask you to use it that souls might be saved and Christians might see how late the day is. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you, beloved.